Hello everybody, this is the second part of section 11.1. .1. The first part we talked about what a sequence is, uh, explosive formula, recursive formula, that kind of thing. Uh, today's part is about a series, which is just the sum of the terms of a sequence. So I have a sequence listed out, it's just the first five odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, nine. That's a sequence, it's just a list of numbers. A series is the sum of those terms of that sequence. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. That's the difference. A sequence is a list of numbers. A series is the sum of the terms of that sequence. All right. We have this thing called summation notation. It is the Greek letter sigma. It looks like that. And so what we're doing, you're taking these terms. So in this example, you got the terms 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10. Those are just even numbers. Okay, to get an even number, you're just taking an integer and multiplying it by 2. So that's an explicit formula. All right, that's part of how this summation notation works. A series is the sum of the terms of a sequence. So that 2n part, that explicit formula, that's giving us our sequence. The sigma says you're going to add up all those things. But where do you start and where do you end? And so that's this thing right here called an index. All right, we're going to start at a certain n value, and we're going to end at a certain n value and add up all of those terms. All right, this is how the summation notation works. So let's let take a look at this one. It says write the terms of each series and then evaluate what that summation equals. So this 2K, that is our explicit formula. All right, so just kind of a little notes up here. We're going to start at the K value of 1. So our first term is 2 times 1. Then we're going to go plus. Now, these values here, the 1 and 6, those are integers, and we're going to use only integers. They're like term numbers. So we're going to go start at 1, we're going to work our way up to 6. So when k equals 2, our next term is 4. Plus, when k equals 3, our term is 6. Plus, when k equals 4, our term is 8. Plus, when k equals 5, our term is 10. Plus, when k equals 6, this is our last term because of that upper index number. When k equals 6, our term is 12. So this is expanding out that summation notation. Adding up these six terms, that's what's going to give us our answer. So to evaluate it, well, just add them up. Um, I'm going to change the order a little bit. There's 20. Here's another 10. So I got 20 plus the 10 is... 30 plus another 10 is 40 plus 2. There's the value of that summation. All right. So now for this bottom example, that 2 is out in front of the summation. So we're just going to write 2 and then expand out that summation. Now it's just the values of k that we're adding up, starting with a k value of 1, with a k value of 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, ending at 6. We're just adding up those values. So that summation is uh, 10, 25, 26. So we have 2 times 26. Uh, did I add that right? 11, 15, 21. I did add wrong. 21, you get 42. Now notice how these two things are the same. Okay, Really, all we did was factored out that 2 from every single term. All right, so there is a property with this. Summation properties. It says right here, if you have a constant value C that you're multiplying a, um, a sequence by, you can just factor that value of C out of that summation and you're still going to add up all those other terms. The other property says if you're adding a couple of terms in that explicit formula that you're adding up all the terms of, you can separate that into two individual summations. So you're just going to, instead of adding 
A plus B for each term, you're just going to add up all the A sequences and add up all the B sequences and then combine those things. And the same thing works with, if that was a subtraction, you would do a subtraction there. Okay, now you have some of these summation formulas. The first one is called a constant series. All right, the idea of this is you're looking at the summation of four, starting at a k value of one, going up to, we'll just do something simple, a k value of three. So if we expand this out, notice how there's no k values in, in our sequence. Our sequence is just four. So when k equals one, we have four plus when k equals 2, we have 4, plus when k equals 3, we have 4. That's just 3 times the constant 4. So when we start at 1 and go up to n, we have n number of constants. You're adding them all up. So instead of adding 4 3 times, we just do 3 times 4. That's where that formula comes from. All right, I'm not going to go through the proof of this, uh, the next two, but a linear series and a quadratic series. If you're just taking the summation of a constant, the n value that you see here, that's the number of terms you are adding up. Starting at the first term, going to the nth term, you have n number of terms. So, for an example, if the summation was from k equals 1 to 5 of k, it would just be 5 times 5 plus 1 over 2. 5 plus 1 is 6 divided by, um, or sorry, uh, 6 times 5 is 30 divided by 2. We're looking at 15. So you go 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, you get 15. The next one is for a quadratic. You're taking the sum of k squared, where you have n terms. It's this formula. Okay, again, I'm not going to go into where that comes from. We could if we wanted to, but not worth our time. So what we're going to do is combine the properties with these formulas to do these examples. All right, so I'm going to expand this thing out. Now we got adding and subtracting terms here. So to start with, n equals 1 to 5 of 4n squared. Then we're going to subtract the summation of 2n n equals 1 to 5, and then we're going to add the summation of 7 from n equals 1 to 5. Now, these first couple terms, there is a constant. We can factor that out. Move over here so we've got more room. 4 times the summation of n squared, n equals 1 to 5, minus 2 times that summation of n from n equals 1 to 5, plus the summation of 7 from n equals 1 to 5. Now, I'm just going to use those formulas. So, it's going to be 4 times. For the n squared formula, it's going to end up being, because we're going from 1 to 5, our n number is 5. So, we're going to have 5 times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. 2 times 5 plus 1 is 11. All of that is divided by 6. Minus 2 times... For the summation of n, that's the linear series. Again, our n value is 5. So we're going to have 5 times 6. That's divided by 2. And then we're going to go plus. Now it's a summation of 7. That's a constant. We have 5 of those 7s that we're adding up. Okay, so now these 6s cancel out. We have 4 times 5 times 11. 5 times 11 is 55, times 4 is 220, minus, these 2's cancel out, we're just left with 5 times 6, so minus 30, plus 5 times 7 is 35, which gives us a grand total of 225. Now, this seems like a lot of work, but it's much easier compared to writing out all the terms. Plugging in 1, in for n, getting that first term. Plugging in 2 into this formula, getting the second term. And keep on going through five terms. This is much easier. Now, I mean, it's five terms. It's not a big deal. But what if this said n equals 55? You're not going to want to figure out 55 terms and then add up those 55 numbers. It's a big waste of time. 
That's why you use these formulas. All right, so let's go through the second example real quick here. So again, I'm going to start by expanding these things out. Uh, we got a couple, we've got three terms here. So this becomes the summation of j squared. And I'm going to factor out a negative 1 right off the bat. j equals 1 to 5 plus, I'm going to factor out that 2 from the summation of j. j equals 1 to 5 plus the summation of 5 from j equals 1 to 5. So we've got a negative 1 times. Here our n value is 5 for this quadratic series. So we're going to have um, 5 times 6 times 11 over 6, oops, bracket, plus 2 times the summation of j from 1 to 5. So that's 5 times 6 over 2, plus we are adding 5, 5 times. So 5 times 5. Okay, once again, the 6 is canceled out. That's kind of convenient. We got 5 times 11, which is 55, times a negative 1. So negative 55 plus... So the twos cancel out, just like in the last example, conveniently, giving us a 30 plus 25. Negative 55 plus 30 plus 25 is 0. So you add up all these terms, you get 0. No big deal. It's just how it works sometimes. This is an example of how these formulas can be used and the properties of summations. Have a good night.